People have to understand, are you using your device or is your device using you? Can you put it down? Can you turn it off? If you don't read the newspaper, you're uninformed. If you do read it, you're misinformed. Hmm. Uh, what do you do? That's a great question. <laughs> what is the long-term effect of too much information? One of the effects is the need to be first, not even to be true anymore. So what a responsibility you all have to, be, to tell the truth. Not just to be first, but to tell the truth. We live in a society now where it's just first. Who cares? Get it out there. We don't care who it hurts. We don't care who we destroy it. We don't care if it's true. Just say it. Sell it. My biggest concern is, uh, is the unfettered access to, to social media and cell phones, quite frankly. Because there's a biology to these things that are as addictive as alcohol, nicotine, and gambling. Right now, a family is out to dinner at a restaurant, not enjoying each other's company, but each staring into the screen of their choice, completely ignoring the family members. And this is mom, dad, and the children all doing the same thing while they continue to eat. They did it the entire meal. Right now, an infant is getting their first iPhone and learning to tap and swipe all while drooling on it. 92% of two-year-olds play video games because that is what parents are putting in front of their precious children to keep them entertained and quiet. This is your life now. No natural behavior. Everybody's wearing clothes they don't want to wear. Everybody's showing up and doing something they don't want to do. They have no connection to. That's the problem with our society. And then what's the reward for all this stuff? Go home, get a big TV. Go home, you're gonna get a shiny belt buckle. You're gonna get a nice purse. You're gonna wear shoes that you couldn't afford last week. You're gonna get that dream car. And every week we're chasing down this new object. And every week we're trying to fill this hole in this, this, this sad shadow of a life that we've been left with after work. That you work eight to whatever the hours a day plus commuting. And then you're like this. And that's your life. That's your real life. All that other stuff is not your life anymore. All that other stuff is work. And most of us have committed to that. I know you've been there before, and I've been there before. And we, we understand that it's a trap because we got out of it. But for the people that are in it, a lot of times they don't even understand it's a trap. They just think it's a good job. They think they got dental. I'm doing really good. I got my own parking spot. It's got my name on it. And you're just a piece of a heartless, shitty machine that makes money. All these kids that are graduating college with these $80,000 degrees that can't even work at Starbucks. All the people who put their money in the stock market and bought all this real estate, 2008, it all went away. Don't let anybody fool you into believing that there's a guarantee, that there's a safe way. The well-trodden path is the scariest way in my, in my opinion Right? Because then you just spent the last 80 years of your life doing everything that everybody else told you to do and you never really lived or produced anything unique. If everybody's going this way, go that way. We now know that many of the major social media companies hire individuals called attention engineers who borrow principles from Las Vegas casino gambling among other places to try to make these products as addictive as possible. In South Korea, internet addiction is classified along with alcohol, cigarettes, and gambling as an addiction. Well, you know, it's about balance. It's not that they're inherently bad, and it's, it's not that texting or social media is inherently bad, but it's when it gets out of balance. Um, if somebody carries their phone wherever they go, like they, they physically feel anxiety if they, if they put it down, um, when they're with their friends and have to have it up the entire time looking at the phone while they're with their friends, you know, when they wake up in the morning and check their phone before they say good morning to the person sleeping next to them, these are problems. This is out of balance. I'm not knocking the phone. What I'm saying is we have to understand, we have to at least ask ourselves around the world, you here in England, wherever you are, what is it doing to us?